Hey everybody, this is Kasu and welcome to another Arc Mod review. Today we are going to be going through Animals of Atlas. So if you guys didn't know, uh, Animals of Atlas actually comes from another game published by Snail Games, unfortunately, uh, called Atlas. And if you've seen the game, it is pretty much like Ark's younger brother, so to speak. Uh, we don't talk about Ark's younger sister, but today uh, they portal over, or rather this mod has been quite for some time released already. They have portal over the animals in the game to Ark itself. And I'm going to be going through each of them. And just another quick note, not all of these animals are spawnable, or rather they don't spawn on their own. Some of them require admin, admin commands to spawn. So just take that with a pinch of salt if you want to know which creatures are only spawnable via admin commands you can refer to the steam mod page for all of this information and again i'll be linking all of them down in the description below so without further ado let's begin now first up on the list is this tall antelope looking thing which is the Sivatarium. i'm gonna read off what the description says about this particular feature the Sivatarium is almost an upgraded galley fairly tanky quick and with 3 seater capability, reasonably all terrain as I made sure to give it a fitting step height, 2 attacks, neck swing with the left mouse button, and for harvesting trees with a big knockback and front leg storm, right mouse button, in case anything manages to get underneath you and for harvesting berries. The Siva is good at gathering thatch and in fact also consumes thatch as well. This can be used as a taming food with the same effectiveness as Medro Berries uh, and Sivatarians can also run for days. They will lose very, very little stamina when sprinting. I've made it the Sivatarium as that was the largest known giraffe relative, although in reality it was a bit stumpier and more heavily built with a shorter neck than the modern or Atlas giraffe. I, it actually had a bit of an ornate horn arrangement in real life, but altogether I think it works out pretty well. Yep, that is the description for this particular uh, creature, the Siva, and I'm going to show you all of his abilities. So as the so as the uh, description suggested, uh, this creature is tameable via knockout, and its favorite food obviously has kibbles to veggies to fetch, then to medjo berries. So this creature you can actually kind of tame it early on and use Satch as uh, the feeding food. And it has a saddle which is crafted in a, in a particular structure which I'll show you guys later. And to create this particular uh, saddle, you require chitin, fiber, height, and metal ingot. So it's a fairly early to mid game creature. So the, for his left mouse button, it is a hit swing attack. Which deals incredible knockback, like I can see that Triceratops flew pretty damn far. Sorry about that, that was my computer lagging for some reason. And if it hits a log or a tree, it will, if you can see it by the side, gain quite a lot of thatch along uh, with some wood. Now for its right click, which is supposedly a storm. However, uh, you have to put it on the side. I have to show it by the side to make it look more obvious. I'm going to spawn one more again, as you can see here. Yep, it's a storm attack. This storm attack, however, does not really do a large knockback, and it does same damage as the hit swing. So this is just to get rid of things underneath your feet. And yeah, that's it for the Siva Therium. No raws, no nothing, just a simple creature with a left click that swings his neck and a right click that uh, do a front storm attack. Now, up next, even though it's messed my creatures are all messed up now because something attacked them is this the moa or the ostrich and for taming this but uh, the moa requires a knockout tame the preferred taming food goes from simple cable to veggies to medjo berries and to craft its saddle because it requires a saddle to ride it uh you require fiber height and wood this uh i'm gonna read out the description and honestly i think all these descriptions are less of like uh to only describe the creature but also more of the developer's notes so let me read out to you i love the ostrich model and animation and think it works really well as one of the largest ever flightless bird the moa 
as well as being a fast and agile mount, the MOA has highly in insulative feathers which will make it able to effectively incubate fertilized eggs help within its ventry. It will incubate them at the regular rate and take your server settings into account. All the way down to 1%. It also has the ability to slowly regenerate any lost health on fertilized eggs. So this creature is basically not really to fight but more to incubate eggs. If, if you do not have the metal or the materials required to incubate the eggs, like for example using the incubator, this creature is probably your be next best bet as it, uh, it won't really protect the egg or rather, yeah, it won't really protect the egg but it will keep the egg warm and if you lose HP to any like circumstances, like for example you didn't keep it warm at first, it will eventually heal up. So let's see its uh, attacks even though it's not really a fighting mount so for left click this seems like a pack attack right click does nothing so this creature it's just only has a left click attack to pack at his uh, enemies again this creature is not really a fighting creature but more of a you know just just a what do you say a farm animal i guess for your fertilized eggs so yeah that is the uh, moa oh my god i accidentally pressed the wrong button Next up is these guys, the Homo Terrier, or better known as the Tigers. The Homo Terrier or the Tigers, I'm going to call them Tigers, uh, comes in two varieties, which is the normal version and the aberrant version. Uh, honestly, I, if I'm not wrong, the aberrant versions uh, just the stripes glow more prevalently. But other than that, it's not really much of a difference. Like you see, there's more, like, you know. Glowy, like the strikes are more prevalent here rather than the normal one. And for the Homotherium to tame them, it is a knockout method and the preferred taming food goes from superior cable, raw mutton, raw prime meat and you know just the usual uh, list of food that, uh, that is needed to tame carnivores. And to craft its saddle, you will need fiber, hide and metal ingots. So let me read off to you the developer notes. Well, it's not quite as well known as its prominently canine and dog relatives, the Homo Therian was a very successful and widespread cat. A plains hunter with a sharp cutting teeth, mostly resembling a tiger, although with a sloped look due to longer front legs. Not something I've been able to emulate, but the Atlas Tiger model works pretty well. As the tiger is based on the Tyler Colio skeleton, it would have been remiss not to use the Tyler's climbing abilities, although the Homo Therium finds climbing much more stamina intensive than its marsupial cousin. The blank bleep, I guess. Yes, I said bleep, stop snickering in the back. Oh, okay, has three attacks. Uh, or oh, the Homo, sorry. So it's, it's just a word. Uh, the, uh, the, the tiger has three attacks. Bite, which is the left mouse button, which causes a bleed, uses the Dino Nikers bleed debuff, so you can bring these guys to boss fights. This attack is also good for stripping prime meat from a corpse but will not gather hype. Claw swipe, right mouse button, slightly more base damage than the bite with a knockback but slower overall. This attack can be used to flee hype from a corpse but will not gather prime meat. And of course the tiger has a mighty roar, which imbues it with a resolve buff increasing damage and damage resistance for 30 seconds. I have now removed the glowing strikes entirely from the regular homotherium as it will stop correctly respecting only working on aberration as such there is now an actual aberrant homotherium. So with that out of the way, let's look at its abilities. So as the uh, developer notes suggest, it can climb trees or climb up mountains though it takes more stamina. So let's take a look. Like so, yeah, so it can climb up uh the mountains and stuff like that so it's good for traveling around i want to jump off okay and uh, it's able to collect meat from dead corpse however let's see all the abilities first like some other track so left mouse button is a blight that does a, a dino nigger's bleed so like i said before you can bring this to boss fights and they will just bleed them dry right click is a claw swipe that does knock back however uh this creature is a bit too big for doing a knockback and if i use my left click to bite it i gain meat not prime meat so the developers not like to me and if i were to kill another one maybe a moment 
and use it to use my right click instead to harvest it. I will gain some meat, uh, but uh, more height and even keratin. And a last of its, uh, I almost forgot the last of this Homotherian's ability is a raw. So let's see, the raw would be C key, which is yep. And with that, I have a buff on the top right, even though it's covered by this particular thing. Let me remove it first. Yep, as you can see, I have the resolve buff over there, which I'm gonna say again, the resolve buff increases damage and uh, damage resistance for 30 seconds. So yeah, this particular creature is quite okay for you if you are not, uh, if you don't have any data Nikers in your particular map, and you can use this creature to substitute it, or you can just download a data Nikers mod for it. But regardless, it's a fairly unique creature, able to run around, able to climb up walls, and basically just a traveling mount, or even a fighting mount. Sting of the Tyler Kodil. So yeah, that is the Homotherium. Now next up is the Cave Lion. The Cave Lion, or simply known as Lion, is, has you know, a male and female model where it's literally the same except the male has a tuft of fur around it. And to tame either of these creatures, it is a knockout tame. The preferred food is regular cable, raw mutton, raw prime meat, same with all other carnivores. And it has a saddle which you can craft with, hold on, fiber, hide, metal ingot, and pelt. So let me read out to you the developer's notes. The Eurasian cave lion was well spread over most of the continent during the Ice Age. And with this, they didn't live in caves per se. They were called this because their remains were often found in caves where they have been killed hunting cave bears or, hum or humans. But this is Ark, so we will take things literally here. The cave lion can indeed be found in caves on most maps. Individually not that strong. The strength of the lion lies in the pride. And in the uh, native environment, the creatures that they share their homes with have learned to respect the power of the pride. Lions receive both a gang bonus up to 6 and a, and a pet creature. Lions will mostly spawn as females, but males are bigger and stronger with more health and do more damage than females. Females in turns are faster. All male lions are able to roar and the highest level member of the pack can also roar. This will imbue all of the pride with an emboldened buff for 90 seconds increasing damage, resist, and output, and give them a speed increase. It will also stop most cave creatures from aggroing on them for the duration of the buff. Uh, this includes scorpions, spiders, snakes, atropolera, but not including megalanias and megalosaurus. Now that I've gone through the cave lions, uh, just developer notes, I guess, let's uh, go through all of its abilities. So, uh, as you can tell, there is a plus one over it, so this creature is a pack creature, as said in the uh, developer's notes. So let's go through its abilities uh, on its by itself first. So I'm gonna spawn a Triceratops. And a left click is a standard bite attack. Right click, however, is a raw. So again, this raw gives Embolden, which will increase its damage output and also its damage resistance. Similar to the Tiger, honestly. So think of the think of this guy. As you can tell, the range for range for them to be so copy in a pack is pretty far. I was quite far away from the female lion, but I still got the, uh, like or rather she still got the buff. So just a quick comparison between the cave lion and the homotherium, is that the homotherium or rather the tiger is more of a solo creature which allows you to run around, travel fast, and uh, basically it's just the tiger polio. Whereas the cave lion, even though both are felines. Basically, it's just a wolf, dire wolf plus where you can use right click to buff your creature or buff any pack members nearby, and it's up to six creatures and up to six creatures of a buff, like up to six creatures of a pack buff too. Hence, making it you know just a better dire wolf. And yeah, that's it for the cave lion. As I said, a just a better dire wolf. Also, just a quick note, uh, that roar that you hear from them, that's not a lion's roar, that's a tiger's roar. Up next is uh, this guy, the Holoponomus, which is just a bear. I'm going to spawn a dire bear to do a quick comparison. So, as you can see, the dire bear is way bigger. 
However, the Die Bear has a much more shorter snout compared to or rather not, not very much. It looks very similar. It's just that the Dire Bear looks more hulking compared to the normal corporal normals or the normal bear, which looks like our you know real life standard bear. So let's read off the developer's note for you guys. So as I previously mentioned, I was struggling to really come up with anything for the Atlas Bear. But then with this exercising my Google Fu, I came across this fella, the Copo Nomos or Other Bear, an early semi-aquatic bear relative of modern bears. Willis is often depicted as having a very square otter-like face. The picture I found of the actual scar looked like the shape of the Atlas Bear's noggin, which would be a good, which is good enough to be uh for rock and roll. I, I, this, the word, the phrasing is very weird. So what does the Copper Nomos bring to the party? He is amphibious. With this, there is an oxygen oxygen stat. It's high, and the Cope's a very good swimmer. Penguin and shellfish is his favorite food. He does 4 times damage against Kairuku and the Atlas Penguin, which I'm going to showcase later. Drip turrets and trailer bites with his left click attack. Corpos can also gather poles using his right click attack. Very buoyant, when ridden, will always be looking to float to the surface. But when on the surface and riding him, you're able to whip out your fishing rod and have a bit of a dangle. Like his cousin, the Dire Bear, Coponomos gets cranky when you invade his personal space. Although, it's, if you want, want to be your friend, you have to get up close and personal as it is a passive tame. Top tip, just take a ghillie and crouch. Because of its high penguin diet, Coppers have a thick layer of organic polymer of their own which grants them a very high torpidity with a rapid rate of drop. And when riding one, you'll be able to laugh in the face of pesky, cheap, stunning dinosaurs, and is immune to stun debuffs from the likes of Baryonyx and Palovias. Although still, although still take care, Baryonyx will still dismount and stun you, but the corp will still be able to fight them back. Eels and jellies will still affect you, so you're not exactly Poseidon while riding one. Coponos, Coponomos is very good at gathering organic polymer from Kairuku and enjoys organic polymer as it is its preferred taming food. So, as mentioned, its taming method is passive and you have to be level 30 in order to uh, feed it. And its uh, tame, preferred taming food, uh, it doesn't have a keyboard yet, is organic polymer, prime fish meat, and so on and so forth. Funny enough, uh, mutton is not on the list, which is kind of interesting. And for the saddle, it requires cementing paste, fiber, height, and polymer. With that being said, let's take a look at its abilities. So, as you can tell, it's relatively, you know, it, like, it's relatively fast in the water. There's not really much of a speed drop uh, from either water or on land. So, it makes it a very, as I said, a semi-aquatic tame. And let's take a look at his attacks. So for his left click, it is a bite attack, which deals you know, that amount of damage. And right click is a claw swipe, which deals more damage. Now let's summon a Kairuku to see how much more damage it does. Now left click, one shot is apparently, and you're getting quite a lot of organic polymer from there. Let me spawn another one. Okay, the penguins are despawning before I even touch them. Oh my god, it's a baby. All right, no mercy. Come here. So you can tell the claw swipe doesn't really do much damage or like do lesser damage to the Kairuku. However, uh, it's left, it's is able to gather much more organic polymer because that was a baby. That's why it's lesser organic polymer, polymer, uh, from the corpse of a penguin. So yeah, that is uh, the bear or the Colponomus. I'm just gonna call it a bear because it's easier to pronounce. Yeah, a creature that requires you to passive tame it, and immune to most uh you know topidity giving creature for example the pesky trill uh, not trailer bite the pesky uh trudon and any other creature that invokes uh, or rather gives you gives creatures topper and it's also semi-aquatic however just beware as the the uh, developer note suggests it is not immune to it's immune to stun you're not immune to stun so you will still get dismounted if you get hit by a Baronyx. And yeah, that is the Coponomus, or just the bear. Okay. And up next is this guy, the Dryptosaurus, or the Razor Tooth. And I'm gonna read off the developer's notes. 
At the suggestion of my buddy up from the depths, Tyrannosaurus Fanboy Supreme, I've decided to go with the Drypto for the Razor 2. It works pretty well in terms of body shape and stance, and there is a plethora of paleo art depicting it as a feathered or with feathery protrusions at least, and I'm really happy with how this feather turned out. Dryptos are ambush predators, not overly strong in a hits up fight, uh, although fairly quick and nimble, they are able to camouflage themselves in any environment. They'll then let their presence be known with an ear splitting scream that disorientates prey, leaving their vision blurring and ears ringing, slow and stumbling and trying to run in blind and death panic. So yes, I tried to dress it up, but this is the UT Fear Raw with a few adjustments to its cooldown and effectiveness with a different post process effect. Unlike the roar of his cousin, the U Tyrannus, the Drypto Scream does affect humans. So let's take a look. Uh, so before I take a look at his abilities, let's see how it's tamed. So its tame method is a knockout method, and the preferred taming food are superior cable, raw mutton, raw prime meat, and so on and so forth for any other meat uh, carnivores. And for the saddle, it is made with fiber, hide, metal ingot, and silica pearl. Now with that being done, let's go through its abilities. So first up, this is a left mouse button, which is a bite attack. So its only attack is this attack, like only damaging dealing effect is attack is this attack, which is just a standard bite attack that uh, uses the U Tyrannus animation. Now, right click is a raw. And this raw, as you can tell, inflicts the ear effect. Or, or rather, the real Tyrannus fear effect. Which causes creatures to all run away from you. As shown here. And also, it does knock them back if they're a bit too close, like so. Like, if you just do this. And there is a fair bit of cooldown before, uh, you, before you're able to, uh, they're able to get feared again. And a last of his ability, as I said, is the Camouflage. So if you press C key, you are Camouflage similar to a Rock Drake. And similar to a Rock Drake, you can, if you screen your eyes high enough, see the creature. Uh, but again, this makes it you know, really difficult. So this is like a Rock Drake beta, I guess, where it's not as powerful or rather it's not as useful in terms of flying around or traveling as a Rock Drake. However, uh, it's still fairly similar to a Rock Drake with a Youth Tyrannus to boot. And yeah, that's it. That's it for the Razor 2. Also, just a quick note, I just realized um, the creature that is bracket inside the developer's note uh, is basically the name of the creature in Atlas. However, the real name, it, or rather the name that is given inside the uh, mod itself is basically the developer trying to give these creatures an identity that is related to real life creatures. Now, up next is these pet, or rather shoulder pet creatures, the Corvus Karak, or Crow. So let me read off the developer's notes. Some will say it's a crow. Some will say it's a raven. Hence, I gone with the ambiguous title of Corvus Karak. Karak was a character from one of my favorite books. He was sometimes the crow god and sometimes the raven god, and no one could tell which he liked pretty things. A smart and social bird can be found in groups where it's most inoffensive. There's two things that they love: a nice fresh corpse to chow down on and anything shiny. The latter can work to a survivor's advantage and disadvantage. Dropping a shiny metal ingot in the vicinity of a corvus will get its attention and be accepted as a gift. After a certain amount of shiny tribute, the corvus will then remain on the ground and as, uh, and as long as it is undisturbed, it will allow you to hand feed it spot meat to complete the taming ritual. However, wild corvus will be maniacally attracted to survivors sporting shiny armor or building shiny tools and will attack enemas. A tame corvus is handy to have around if you're looking to go undergo any crafting project. It can't be leveled in speed, but instead has a crafting skill. When picking up your clever pet, you receive a boost to your own crafting skill of 20% that of the corvus while this release is resting on your soldier shoulder. So basically to tame this creature, uh, you have to attract it with metal ingots which will 
you know attract it to the ground and once it stays on the ground you can feed it or rather hand feed it um basically putting the food at zero spoiled food so that you'll you know consume it and you can slowly tame uh level up its taming efficiency hence making this creature a what the hell a passive tame and this creature even though it's just you know a creature where when you pick it up you have a buff at the bottom i'm gonna show you uh show it towards a darker darker reach yep as you can see from the bottom you have a buff called Cobus. having a smart bird helping you can be a boon which boosts your crafting efficiency or your own crafting skill by 20 percent as you can tell it's like 135 percent now but if i throw it off it's only 100 percent so it's only 20 percent it's actually 35 percent and funny enough, uh, this particular creature has a gang bonus. So if you want to, you know, have a, as the name suggests, a murder of crows, you can, in fact, tame up to uh, eight of them and use them to harass or attack someone or something. And yeah, that's it for the Corvus Correct, a unique little creature that boosts your crafting speed Willis also you know being a you know, cool little creature like you know look at that hard to find you know birds like this in the arc anyways up next is this beautiful little fella the macaw as you know it's literally just a macaw uh it's a parrot i'm just gonna call it a macaw because it's actually a macaw and these are the developer notes you will find a happier, more carefree creature on the Ark than the happy-go-lucky macaw. Content to fly around, chattering away to itself, will flee rather than fight, happy to do tricks for its own amusement and that of others. Easy to charm and make it make into a companion. When it does alight on the ground, calmly approach it and give it a pet. Once happy enough uh, after enough pets, it will be your friend for life. Other creatures aren't quite sure what to make of the noise and impression are uh, almost constantly emitting from a tame macaw's beak and having one on your shoulder will allow you to get closer to wild dinos than usual until you get too close then the illusion gets broken and they may attack this reduces the targeting basically this reduces the targeting range of an enemy dino and the higher level of macaw the greater the uh, reduction up to a maximum of 60 percent range reduction slightly more effective than a full ghillie suit also, keep an eye out for the rare all blue variety of macaw, sometimes called a Norwegian blue, sometimes a Spix macaw, sometimes just blue. Male macaw spots a feathered crest, and when tamed, macaws are able to wear your jaunty hat for ultimate cuteness. So, yeah, basically, this particular creature is just a ghillie suit. Like, you can just wear it like a ghillie suit. And if I'm not, I don't know how, whether the effects of a ghillie suit and this creature on your shoulder stacks. But if you guys can find out for me and put it down in the comments below, that would be very much appreciated. And as the thing suggests, it can put you can put a hat on it, right? So let me just put a uh I think I think this is funnier. <laughs> so yeah, you can put a hat on it. Look at that, so cute. Alright. So uh, again the taming method is when on the ground, crouch or prone and approach the parrot and press E when prompt. Basically similar to uh, the hyena. Also, uh, if you want to know what to feed your macaw, uh, feed it vegetables or berries. It is a healthy ball. And yeah, that's it for the macaw. Just a cute little unique pet creature that you can put on your shoulder. That, that also gives you more effect, uh, like a much better effect than the giddy suit if it's level high enough. Now, up next is the bobcat or the cat. So yes, I'm going to read off the developer's notes. I apologize. Kitty! Yes, indeed. All your arc soft kitty dreams can now come true. As well as just being the most adorable things ever, having a cute widow party cat, cat around can be quite beneficial as the natural enemy of small annoying flappy creatures. A tame cat will scare away wild ichthyornis, vultures, corvus, and dimorphodons before they have the chance to ruin your day. You can also put your furry little friends on wonder and it will keep itself fed by hunting small squeaky things represented by harvesting bushes and receiving meat, uh, chitin and hide in its inventory. Your feline companion will also periodically display some heart meltingly cute behaviors when idle. Now you can also find a glowing kitty variant with aberration. 
on apparition. So yes, this creature comes in uh, two variants, the normal variant and the Bobcat variant. And as the description suggests, the re or rather the reason, not reason, uh, the reason why you want to tame this creature is so that you can keep those flying seagulls away from my creatures and they can stop pecking me and eating my food, especially when I start the game. So this creature is very useful. Now, how to tame this creature? It is a passive tame, so when on the ground, you must go prone to avoid uh, startling the cat. And its favorite food is actually kettle milk or mammalian milk from uh, Better Dinos Mod. Prime fish and raw fish meat and so on and so forth. Basically what a cat likes. Uh, so the kettle milk I'll go through later as one of a, it is one of the things that a uh, later creature creates. And uh, yeah, that's it for the uh, Bobcat. Just say, you know, a simple creature that you can put on your shoulder. And honestly, it looks pretty cute. You know, cats are just like, one of the cuter creatures in life. And this Bobcat just looks scary, to be honest. Now, up next is uh, this Rock Skipper Penguin lookalike called the Peyudiptus. I'm just going to put it on the screen. Or rather, you can see the spelling on the screen right now. If you can't, I'm going to put it on the screen. You tell me how to say it. Uh, or rather the penguin. I'm gonna read off the developer notes again. I apologize. P -p 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 Pick up a penguin and give it a warm hug in return. The bigger and more adorable cousin of the Kairuku can be found alongside them. But it is a very different animal indeed. Although they have a few similarities like being found with younglings the and able to be club senseless for their sweet sweet polymer, these larger penguins will bite back if attacked. Though they don't have a large range of insulation, picking one up for a warm adorable hug will grant an insulation buff, but the warm fuzzy feeling will also help you earn a small amount of additional XP. In the water, however, these penguins come into their own. Able to pull along a rider, they have also developed the ability to create and rapidly fire high-speed projectiles with prompting from their riders which is left click as well as being able to do a quick bite right click why can they do this something something evolution the idea of a machine gun penguin amused me and there's no other underwater projectile firing creatures not only that but their eggs are massively polymer rich and in the penguins inventory can uh it can be crafted into one regular and one organic polymer. Uh, you can also craft Louis Laos, sorry, Laos antidote, which is essential for taming and upkeep of the Maya, Maya Balena, which I'm going to show you later in the AOA crafting badge, which I'm going to show you later too. So, to tame these creatures uh, is to knock them out, and their preferred taming food is whale lice, which I'm going to show you later, mutton, and prime meat. Or prime fish. Now this is something very interesting about you know able to carry them in the water. However, this is how it looks like carrying them. They are actually hugging you back, and you have a little debuff called a little buff called warm hugs at the bottom of the corner, which says warm hugs make you feel good. So let's throw them in the water and see how this works. So once you put in the water, they just go into <laughs> jet ski mode, I guess. And you can ride them. Uh, once you're riding them, they are fairly fast, like really fast. And let's test out its abilities on certain creatures. I'm gonna spawn a trike because again, it's the easiest of the bunch. So right click is a bite attack. As you can tell, it's ready. It's really fast, so it's a bit hard to control it. Left click is a machine gun that increases torpidity value. I guess. And it's just really funny to see this. Like, look at that. <laughs> uh, so I was going to go on land, you dismount and you can pick it up and you can just throw it inside and use it as a surfboard or a jet ski. So yeah, this creature is pretty fun. It's a portable surfboard slant jet ski where you can use to propel around. It's relatively fast as you can tell and it's fairly easy to tame too as even though it needs whale lice you don't really need whale lice you just need mutton or you know any prime meat so yeah that is the penguin which is again just a hilarious little creature but very unique and i like it a lot
And also, this, this is just adorable. Look at him hugging you. Now, okay. now, up next is this creature, the boss or the cow. So, to tame any of these two creatures, uh, depending on the uh, gender, it's different. So, for the female, you just need a passive feed it, simple, simple kibbles, vegetables, medjo berries, and berries. Whereas for the male, you just need to knock them out and feed them the same exact food. For, uh, I'm gonna read off the developer's note for you. Following the Aquarius Ovis naming convention, and including by popular requests uh, by wannabe cowboys everywhere, the boss is a domestic cow. Females are gentle, docile, and will run from danger and can be passively tamed and are happy to be milked for their nutritious cattle milk via a radio menu will give 2-4 to four milks 30 minutes cooldown. Users of my battle Dinos mod will find cattle milk is functionally identical to mammal milk from that mod. Male boss are bulls and are bigger than females. Highly aggressive when wild and do 50% more damage. Also receiving a 50% damage reduction, they must be knockout tamed. Tame boss can be ridden without saddles and will harvest trees with left click and right click uh, and bushes with right click. When tamed, boss can be slaughtered in the same manner as always by holding something sharp and selecting it from the radio menu. Uh, boss drop delicious beef, this can be used for dinos as a direct replacement for mutton and it, it can also be used in custom recipes and will give a higher health and stamina percentage than other meat. To be able to cook beef, you will need to learn and craft the uh, animals of Atlas campfire. If breeding boss, uh, you may want to neuter any male babies that don't have any good stats uh, to be put to start. Male boss neutered as a baby will become steer. It will also it will lose the usual damage resistance uh, damage and resistance increase. However, if you then slaughter and harvest it as an adult, it will give a lot more beef than usual, scaling your health like the Ovis. So this particular creature is fairly unique that it has a mechanic where when you tame, or rather when you tame, not tame one, when you have one uh, as a baby, you can neuter it and it will give you much more meat later on. And as you can tell, this is the female version of the boss. Uh, that is not a boss that is an aurochs. I'm gonna try to spawn a male version of it. Ah, male. There we go. So yeah, this is the male version of the uh, boss or the cow. As you can tell, it is fairly bigger and uh, has you know, just a larger horn in general compared to their uh, uh, female counterpart. And the female counterpart, if you hold here, can be milked for the cattle milk, which is a the best taming food for the bobcat. Now let's take a look at his abilities. So left click is a hit button attack. Right click is I kind of like grazing, I guess. Well, the model is a bit okay. That's just light. Yeah. So it's just grazing, as you can tell. Literally just grazing. However, it takes really long. And let's try out on a harmless creature like the moss chop. So if I press right click, I do bite it. However, it's not really an effective attack. But if I left click it, it is a just a normal you know charge attack. And again, this is already the fifty percent more damage because it is a male. So females will do you know uh, fifty percent less damage compared to that. Again, this doesn't seem like it's a fighting creature but more of a farm creature and with that let's kill it and find out uh find get this meat right oh there's a nice little cool animation from dying and let's bring out a hatchet and if you're harvesting it you can see that instead of getting meat you get raw beef and also hide also you get quite a lot of raw beef and again with all of this food i will show you later where to craft it or how to use it and yeah that's it for the boss and also, I can tell the male is called a bull, the female is called a boss. Now, up next is this guy, the Mihirang, which is a chicken. So, this chicken, you don't have to have any saddle to ride it because it does not need any saddle. And uh, you can tame it by knocking it out. And its preferred taming foods are basic cable, vegetable seeds, medjo berry seeds, and other berry seeds. Not the berry itself, the seeds. And I'm going to read off the developer's notes. Is literally just a chicken. I don't know why, but people keep asking for a chicken. So here's a chicken, and it clucks and lays eggs. It's a chicken. Actually, ignore that. Giant chickens, y'all. I realized that I actually really like the chicken model, and it was a shame to have 
it used it for essentially a dodo reskin. So yeah, here you go. Giant rideable chickens. The real Mihirangs were more goose-like than chicken-like with big bobber schnozzers. But hey, creative license will out. What? Mihirangs have a limited terrible style gliding ability, flapping their little wings like crazy. Not the strongest mount, nor the fastest, definitely not the coolest, but a good solid fun to rock around uh around on the early doors. Chicken only eats seeds. Placing them on wonder will see them gather seeds in large amount of bushes with a greater chance of finding them than usual. And when ridden, they will only gather seeds from a from bushes, making them a great early source for all types of seed. Killing a wild Mihirang will reward you with two Mihirang drumsticks. Cause who doesn't love big meaty ties? These unsuitable for human consumption, far too tough and gamey, but wild carnivores love them. And they can be used in the same way as honey to attract and lure carnivores. This will also uh, distract Lysictis from norming on your carefully built raft, putting them on your hotbar and use them to and use them to drop them, exactly the same as honey. So yeah, as the name suggests, this is just a farming creature and I just left it here for a bit and they start like dropping these eggs so I'm gonna pick them up and read up to you what the eggs are. Hold on a second, there we go. So this is a Mihirang egg, a tremendously nourishing, it's tremendously nourishing by itself. This egg provides simple nutritional value in many cooking recipes. I'm not sure what cooking recipes they are but I'm just gonna ignore that. So the Mihirang abilities are that it's literally just a total bird model, it can jump pretty high. Uh, and you jump high and you hold left click. I'm gonna jump on a higher ledge first, give me a moment. If you jump and hold left click, it will just it's on the way down, you know, like this. So, yeah, that is, and it's it doesn't have much abilities, it just have a left click that bites, but it's a bit hard to grab people. Uh, if you do harvest bushes though, it just gives you a ton of seeds, like holy shit, look at that. And it seeds, so you just need to throw seeds in that inventory and you can use it to even gather seeds to help you start off your farm. And one last thing, obviously. What do you get from killing it? You get raw meat, however you have to... If, uh, I need to kill a wild one for its drumstick, so let's spawn a wild one and see what happens. Right, I spawn a wild chicken uh, and just kill it. And yeah, once you kill it, you drop like this. Two drumsticks for you to pick up. It, it looks cooked already, by the way. Like, look at that, it's, it has rosemary and everything on it. It looks cooked already. And yeah, that's it for the Mihirang, just a standard chicken, which is again used for farming in this game, or rather in this mod. Now, up next is this uh, thick boy, which is the Aurox, which is or the boot. <coughs> I'm gonna read off the notes, I'm gonna read off the battle notes. Alongside the domesticated cattle in the boss comes their bigger and nastier and pointier ancestors, the Aurox. Having not been too impressed with the bulls model in Atlas, I've actually, I think it actually comes alive a bit more in Ark. The wild aurochs are bad tempered buggers and not likely liking survivors getting too close to their personal space. These big old hunks of meat and muscle will happily put their impressive hit elements to good use. Females do have a slightly smaller rack than males. But unlike boss, both sexes are mean, moody, and not too happy to see you, and are equally as strong. Taming an Aurox, although has a host of benefits. Females will give milk, although not as much as a selective breeding boss will. But a charging Aurox can really wreck someone's day. They have a Rhino style charge, building up melee damage with speed, although not to the extent of the Rhino being a bit smaller, up to 4 times damage at full pelt. They are also capable of doing a straight line charge with a right mouse button uh, that not only increases their overall speed, keep holding uh, shift for the full speed attack, but also inflicting a bleed and slow on anything they hit. 5% uh, bleed over 10 seconds and a 75% slow. Why not restart the full domestication of cattle with your Aurochs by hitching up 
with a special cart saddle. This small platform dragged behind uh, the Aurox is just perfect for some chairs to transport friends around. Maybe a bit of a storage to get mats from uh, place to place, or maybe just stick a cannon on it. Any materials placed in storage boxes on the cart will only have a 33% of their weight passed onto the Aurox. As opposed to 100% as usual, and it's usually the case when with platforms. Aurochs make a good all-around tame for transport and combat. So to tame this creature, you have to knock it out and feed it superior cable, veggies, medjo berries, and berries, the standard food for uh, herbivores. And uh, to make the saddle, it actually has two saddles. One is the primitive Aurochs saddle, which is made using fiber, height, and metal ingot. And the other one is the cart saddle, which I'm going to equip now, made by fiber, height, ingot, and metal ingot, and wood. So yeah, as you can tell, you can, you can put you know, stuff here. You can, if I'm not wrong, you can actually build stuff on it, which I'm going to try, like, you know, slapping some structures on it. Foundation. Not really the case, but they say you can put a candle on it and stuff like that. So let's take a look at this ability. Oh, but if you're not wrong, I you can put a storage box behind it. If I'm not wrong, yep, you can put a storage storage box behind it. And as it suggests, you can put all the things be, uh anything behind it, or rather anything uh inside is only 33% of the weight for the Aurox. So this makes it a fairly good uh just traveling mount or carriage mount. So let's take a pick up, let's take a look at his abilities. So I'm just going to spawn a right again. So left click is doesn't make it disappear. Hold on. I'm gonna use the cover nemesis instead. Okay. So left click is a hit button attack. Rising up to four damage uh when riding when running a rhino charge. So I'm just going to run around for a bit once i get full charge i'm gonna run backwards and unlock him as you can tell i dealt not a lot more damage let me try again i think i messed up somewhere let me try again and yeah it says four times damage but i'm only dealing like 190 like 119 damage so it's, I, i'm not sure whether that's something going wrong with the coding like a bug or something but not very sure um right click right mouse button is a straight line charge which like you know does this i'm gonna spawn or i'm gonna charge at something but let's use it while i'm running too so oh so yeah you just run a lot faster when you have a when you just build up the momentum and then you press right click However, it's a bit hard to hit. I can't hit this dodo, or it's just that the dodo is too small. So let's try on something bigger, for example that parasaur there. Like so. Okay, apparently not. Huh. It's supposed to bump and cause bleed. Oh, there we go. So, it's... I think I have to run through them? It's a bit weird on how the hitbox works, because... As I'm charging. Ah yeah, okay, the hitbox is a bit wonky. So yeah, once you charge at them, they will be got, they will bleed, and they'll be slow. So yeah, poor 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 parasol. And lastly is C key, which is a grace similar to the boost or the boss. And it also deals damage, but again it's not really for damaging, it's just for you know collecting berries. So yeah, that's it for the Aurox, a fairly interesting creature with a fairly well-rounded, or just a traveling, or rather a better parasol for carrying uh, stuff and traveling around, or traveling materials, or carrying materials, say wrong. Next up is uh, this particular creature, it's a bit, oh god damn, we have four tasks, but uh, this is the Metridio Chorus, or the pig. This, I'm gonna read off the developer's notes. This is one warthog for whom Hakuna is definitely not Matata. Always hungry, always eating, and definitely not fussy. What it is, they are shoveling down their gullets. 
if you've seen the film Snatch, then I will refer you to a break top speech about hungry piggies. If you haven't, well, go watch it. It's a great film. As you expect, these little piggies will clear the shop when they go to the market. Omnivores that will scoff down anything, including rare mushroom and flowers. Although with their ability to find aforementioned mushrooms in massive quantity, you can safely remove the rare from their name. Their preferred taming food is sweet veggie cakes, and unlike other omnivores, they will indeed receive the health boost that comes with consuming them. The hungrier the Metridios gets, or hungrier the pig gets, the harder they hit. Melee damage will increase the lower, uh, the lower the food gets, up to a 2 times melee on a totally empty stomach. Killing piggies use delicious pork chops. These operate in the same fashion as swine flesh from um, Bella Dino, providing fast healing for carnivores, increased health for when compared to not normal raw meat with half of the force feed cooldown. Basically, just basically that's fancy way of saying you can force feed all of the uh, meat inside your carnivore food to heal them up. As with beef, you can make cooked pork chops in the Animal Atlas campfire. You'll also be able to cook up a mouth-watering full English breakfast in the Animal of Atlas crafting bench, made using pork, extra small eggs, several roots, rare mushrooms, and rare mushrooms, sorry. Guaranteed for a full stomach from this hearty meal, it'll keep your food going up for a full 5 minutes and restoring a big old chunk of health too. Recently added, the pigs uh, seem to have developed something of a stomach issue since being introduced to the Ark. They've gone a little, how should I put it, um, gassy? When wild or unridden, a piggy who gets reduced to less than 50% health will let rip a massive fart and then proceed to leg it as fast as their little trotters will carry them. This will definitely, this is definitely not the silent variety, but certainly deadly, dealing 5 damage per tick over 5 seconds as it lingers in the air. Even giant carnivores cannot stand the smell and will run away from the stench. Riding a pig, you can put this to good use and make it expel wind on command by pressing right click, but only if it needs uh, it is in need of doing a poop. On the upside, you're able to let out several pups going on before it invariably follows through. A poop icon in your left corner will let you know when the piggy is ready to go. Now that you go through uh, its uh, developer notes, which is kind of funny, uh, let's go through on how to tame this creature. So to tame this creature, it is a knockout method. Its preferred food are uh, sweet veggie cakes, raw mutton or beef, raw prime, uh, raw prime meat, Raw mushroom or flowers, raw meat, veggies, etc. It is an omnivore, so it eats literally anything. And uh, let's see its saddle, which is made using fiber, height, and wood. So it's a fairly easy saddle. Now, let's take a look at the ability. So, first up, uh, let's want to track to see. First up is left click attack. Which is a, a bite, I suppose, or a goring task. Uh, no, no, depending on how you see it. So this uh, particular attack rises up to two times the damage when decreasing wood. So now currently it's doing eighty damage. Let's spawn another track, and I will increase my food to make it much more empty, and see how this works. So I literally am starving right now. And if I left click it, I do 122 damage. So yes, I do more damage the hungrier I am. Unfortunately, it does not have an AoE heal like its uh, arc counterpart, the Hell Pigs. Uh, but it does have this particular ability, which I'm going to slow another track to test out, which I'm going to hit it. As you can see, the track is angry at me. But if I right click, it will start running away from me. And it's taking you know, 5 damage in this lingering poison cloud. And yeah, it's just disgusting. You basically just fart enemies away. And one last thing to note, if you do kill your pig or you kill a wild pig, you get pork chop, which looks hideous. It looks like, uh, it looks like, I know they're using the older, like the same model as the raw meat, but it looks so discolored, it's like rotting soon. And yeah, that's the pork chop. Uh. And yeah, that's it for the pig. Just a... It's a cool looking feature, but it feels like a troll feature, you know. Up next is this guy, the Timber Wolf. The Timber Wolf is basically just a normal wolf, but 
you can't ride it unfortunately there's no saddle like, there's a saddle for you to ride there's a saddle mark but you can't really ride it as you can there's no saddle for it and before i read off the general notes i'm going to spawn a dire wolf to show you the difference between them so as you can tell this is the uh dire wolf and this is the wolf it's much more smaller than uh, the dire wolf you can't ride it however it does have a lot nicer patterns on its face i look at that and with that let me read off the developer notes for you guys the atlas wolf looks quite different to its art cousin and i wanted to include it but obviously the dire wolf does pretty much everything you expect a wolf to do so it was really hard to find uh much to do with it what therefore the timber wolf has been strung down to a more normal size although still big boys for purpose retaining its pack and gang mechanic but with overall uh lower stats than the dire wolves unrideable but you can still make the pack leader howl and bath via the radio menu you can also make your good boys lay down and look more adorable as well as receiving health regen buff same as the calicotherium or the hyena sitting as much as i like to also have a sitting animation it just in there with animating so the laying down we'll have to do for now very aggressive in packs in the wild timber wolves are passive tame but to avoid having them tear you limb from limb you have to employ the use of something that they are afraid of fire hold a torch or be in close vicinity of a standing torch or campfire and they won't attack uh, they won't attack unless attack first they will also flee if given any sort of fire damaging buff there may be uh, another thing or two coming in the future with this creature but they'll be fine companions in the meantime so to tame this creature since it's unreadable i won't say any saddles to tame this creature is a passive team where you have to hold a torch or be near any fire source no light source just a fire source and walk up to them and feed them this food in this order uh, not this order sorry this food in uh, order of efficiency raw beef raw mutton raw prime meat and raw meat and as the description says you can uh, tame a bunch of them to have the pack wolf buff however honestly i think rather you have the die wolf instead but it does come with a good little lay down animation which you know you don't want to fluff that stomach i just it so yeah that's it that's for the uh that's it for the timber wolf just a smaller version of the die wolf doesn't really add anything but it adds a little cute animation of it lying down so uh the last creature for this video but not the mod because uh, i realized that the mod is pretty big so i'm going to separate the aquatic creature for next week's video is this the ludo dactylus or the leather wing so i'm gonna read off to you the entire goddamn paragraph like yes four paragraphs i'm gonna read off of Ick this extraordinaire these highly aggressive aerial predators will attack most things that move especially survivors and look to carry it up in the air and drop it to its death however if there is anything that they love above all else it's eggs and they have became become something of a specialized egg thief which you can use to your advantage to both tame one and to put it to good use afterwards to tame a ludo equip an egg in your zero slot in your hotbar as for normal passive tames However, the opportunity will only arise for you to feed it if the Ludo grabs you and carries you upwards. You will want to have something to soak the damage, either be riding a tanky tame or have a shield and good armor at the ready. When it grabs you, you will be able to feed it the egg. It will then lose interest in you for a short amount of time, which is somewhat unfortunate as it will then drop you and let you fall to your doom. So to make sure to have a parachute or an Archaeopteryx. Rinse and repeat until it is tamed. Don't worry if a Ludo grabs you and you're not attempting to tame it, it will drop you a few seconds uh, after holding you. All in all, it's not wise to attempt to take on a Ludo if you are not well prepared. On the upside, though, one good whack will see them flying. And they do, of course, take damage from projectiles, increase damage from projectiles like other flyers. This part of the paragraph is a bit weird. This is like my third take, so I'm just gonna read it word for word and again understand what i mean once tamed you have a pretty fast flyer somewhere between terra and arjun for speed and stats it can barrel roll but if pointing downwards a crosshair will appear and pressing c will unless a rapid forward burst of speed 
dealing damage to anything you hit on the way past and allowing you to escape from anything that may be chasing you and if you are using a ludo correctly things probably will be chasing you and as ludos can be effectively used to raid wild nest for juicy eggs land near to a nest and use left click to attack an egg and ludo will collect it and add it to its inventory doing this will not alert any nearby parents unlike it would if you picked up an egg normally but of course if you it will still need to get in and out of there so watch your stamina and time your dashes well also make sure you have meat on board as a ludo will have this coughed out any egg in its inventory if it's not fed so yeah keep a look out for that ludos can swim quite happily on the surface of the water but can also go underwater by holding down uh, your alternate fire button which is your left control by default Ludos are very good at harvesting prime fish and from anything it can drop it from anything that can drop it. On top of all of that, Ludos can also receive a small gang boost. All in all, Ludos are, is a fantastic flying addition, especially at home on Scorch Earth and Ragnarok. So let's take a look at its abilities. So as you can tell, uh, it's you press you can press space to fly up. Let me change the timing to daytime. Seeky, while you know just facing upwards, does a barrel roll that dashes forward. However, to test out the ability, I'm gonna go further up. And once I'm further up, I'm gonna aim downwards. Cause when I aim downwards, I can tell at some point of elevation. Once you go to a certain elevation the cursor will appear and once the cursor appears if you press C you will do a dash downwards and one, unlike other flyers once in water you won't be dismounted or rather you'll just be swimming which is very interesting this is the first time I see a Pterodon swim in up and once you hold alternate you will or probably left control you will dive down so yeah this is a similar to uh, the giant Flying pelican in up actually, and from from the water you can obviously you know fly up like this. So yeah, this makes it a very, I guess yeah, a very interesting flyer actually. Well, and this is as I said there, actually one of the best flyers in the game, as it's you know relatively fast. Uh, but the C key you have to hold down. It's not a dash, so you have to hold down the C key to make it go longer. And I'm gonna show you again, like so. Yeah, you have to hold on CQ longer. Any change of direction will you know cancel out the dash. And now with that going with that, let's go through its abilities. Let's attacking abilities rather. So left click is a bite attack. Right click is a grab. However, it only can grab uh smaller creatures, I guess. Can you grab this guy? Nope. Uh let me go find something to grab. Ah. There you go. Uh, okay, the grabbing is a bit hard. Oh no, okay, never mind. Oh, you can go away now, thanks. So, yeah, right click, uh, I, even though I didn't show it, is to grab, and it will get the. And its maximum drag weight is actually 100, so anything above 100, you can't grab. Oh, and also, uh, last thing I almost forgot to mention when reading the how to tame, uh, the how to tame in the description is this preferred taming food. So, it's fertilized wyvern. Uh, fertilized Wyvern Drake or Magnasaurus Egg, then Youth Tyrannus Egg, Fertilized Dino Nagus Egg, Extra Large Egg, Large, Medium, Small, Extra Small Eggs in that order. Golden Hesperonis Eggs cannot be used. So this is very similar to the uh, Oviraptor's uh, taming food. And yeah, with that, uh, I'm done with the Ludodactylus. Honestly, quite a very quite a fun flyer to tame. It has the uh, taming mechanism of the blood sucking spider. And all in all, pretty fun. Now, before I end this stream, uh, not stream, before I end this video, since I'm going to be going through uh, these creatures or the aquatic creatures in the next video, let's go through the items uh, craftable in this mod. So, first up is the campfire, the, at the AOA campfire, which is here. Uh, you, it's the same crafting recipe as a campfire, flint, stone, thatch, and wood. But with this, you can create pork chops, roasted beef, and cook the other creature, uh, other meats in the game, in the vanilla game. 
Next is this one, the uh, AOA Smithy, which is again faster in inventory and it requires the same thing as a Smithy, which is height, metal, stone, and wood. And you can create consumables like this a all day breakfast, which requires two well, one cooked pork chop, two dinosaur eggs, uh, two rare mushrooms, two several roots, and spark powder. If I'm not wrong, uh, no, I am very wrong. Uh, you cannot use the chicken egg as substitute for this egg for some reason. I have no idea why. And the other one is this, the fish pie. Uh, I'm going to read off the description of fish pie since it's much longer. Kraken's famous homemade fish pie. A hearty seafood feast full of omega-3 and all that good stuff. Not only nutritious, but will help relieve your muscle, muscles. And when swimming help uh when swimming helping your stroke last longer so it is a food bath that will you know make you last longer uh you require kettle milk long grass raw mollusk meat raw prime fish meat several root and spark powder i'm not very sure where you find the mollusk meat oh okay it is dropped uh from a aquatic creature which i'm going to showcase in the next mod in the next uh mod review and for drugs wise uh you make this the whale louse antidote this is used to kill curb the outbreaks of whale louse on your whale which i'm going to go through next week since you know i'm going to go through all the aquatic features next week and last of all you can create the atlas scorpion costume and the atlas wolf costume for your dire wolf and your scorpion which let me make right now actually so first up is uh the wolf costume which i'm gonna put it on and yeah you look like the dial like the wolf in atlas which is that one and for this guy come here if i put this on you you look much better actually why did i not use this for ah what the fuck it looks really like a lot better like let's do a comparison without the skin it looks like this you know flat beady eyes the the claws look more like crustacean claws than anything but with it it looks like an actual scorpion god damn all right i actually really like this skin so yeah and with that we have come to the end of part one of the animals of atlas mod i will be going through part two of the uh this particular mod next week where i'll be going through all of the aquatic creatures which are also fairly unique also fairly unique to tame too and also to go through what this uh will will louse and you don't think is and with that we have come to the end of the video thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you all in tomorrow's stream bye now say bye